Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros, and today we're starting a really exciting project. We are showing you exactly how to take a garden variety 5.3 liter uh, truck LS engine and build it into a really cool street motor that you can put into basically anything you want. Now don't worry about the big block series, the big block isn't going anywhere. We are still building it. I just ran into a little bit of a roadblock trying to install it into my Camaro, and we had this 5.3 sitting around, so I wanted to get started on it. I also wanted to announce that this 5.3 is going to be sponsored by Summit Racing. Summit reached out to me and said, hey, they wanted to be involved in our next engine build. And they're not sending me any money, but they're going to be providing some really cool parts. So thank you, Summit Racing. Make sure you buy all your speed parts from SummitRacing.com. So this is an LM7 5.3 liter LS V8. Uh, made by General Motors somewhere in the year 2000, 2001. It's out of an 01 Silverado, but GM made this engine from 99 to 05 or 07, I believe, until they changed a few things. But all the 5.3s work pretty much identically. So this, uh, this guide's gonna apply to basically every 5.3 ever made, um, except for the ones with direct injection. Those are a little bit different, but honestly, no one's gonna be building those just yet due to how new they are. These 5.3s are available everywhere. They're incredibly popular. They're in high demand, but they're also in high supply. So that keeps the prices pretty reasonable. I actually paid about $500 for this engine delivered to my door via eBay. So you could go to a junkyard house and get one uh, out of a truck for maybe cheaper, but then you'd have to take it out of the truck yourself. Uh, this was delivered to my door uh, via freight for $500, which to me is quite the bargain because I bought my big block for $600 and it was just a block. It didn't come with um, heads, crank, pistons, harmonic balance, or timing plate cover, all that good stuff did not come with it. So uh, they're a pretty reasonable deal. You can get a ton of power out of them. They are built like bulletproof tanks and they have a ton of aftermarket support. There is a literal mountain of aftermarket products for the LM753. So with all that out of the way, the only two things you're really gonna need today is a good engine crane and a good engine stand, which I provided links down below in the description. And let's jump in. So this is how your GM53 is gonna come if you order it off of eBay. If you get it from a junkyard or something, it's not gonna be on this nice pallet most likely. Um, we can see that this is a runs good motor, 5.3 liter off of a Silverado from 01. And when I bought it, it had 265,000 miles on it. So it is properly, properly used. The cool thing about buying something used like this is it comes with a bunch of stuff. You know, there's a lot of wiring. There's the uh, water pumps included. It looks like they didn't give us power steering pump starter or alternator or AC compressor, but that's all fine. I don't really need that for our future application anyway. It has everything we need, which is super cool. So. The first thing we're gonna do before we do anything is make sure that the engine is pretty stable on this pallet because once we cut these uh, tie downs here, we wanna make sure the engine's not just gonna flop over or something, so. And then once those are, once we're sure the engine is stable, we can remove our flex plate here. And this is really, really important. These bolts are really special, so you wanna keep them in a safe place because they're pretty difficult to find and you don't wanna lose them. So let's go ahead and get started. So with our engine still uh, strapped down on uh, the pallet here, what you're gonna be using is a breaker bar, unless you have an impact gun, uh, which feel free to use, but a breaker bar is gonna be your friend here. So if you're gonna use a breaker bar, you're gonna have to hold the flex plate somehow with like a large screwdriver, some sort of prying implement. They even make tools that uh, are basically big handles that go on the ring gear. I can use those as well, but I have an impact gun, so we're gonna use that, and it is a 15 millimeter. Like I said previously, these are very special bolts. So hold on to them, put them somewhere safe. So now what we can do is grab a large prying implement, put it behind the flex plate and walk it off. There we go. So now with our flex plate removed, we can go ahead and uh, clip our straps here. So we're gonna grab a pair of sheet metal shears so we can get through that like butter and the engine didn't flop over, so that's good news. 
<laughs> so now you can see I've affixed the chain to the front of the right cylinder head here. And I put a washer on there and it's in fairly deep as well. This is a decently uh, long bolt and it's got plenty of meat there in the head. You don't want to put, you know, two threads on there and expect the whole engine to be held by that. And then I have it wound, or not wound, but I have it affixed like this with a nut and bolt to kind of make a little hoop here. Now, if you don't have this, what happens is the hook on your engine hoist goes zzzz one way and then uh, you can't get it to uh, go back to the way it was originally because it weighs over 500 pounds. So you gotta be careful when you're dealing with this kind of weight. And uh, we can see that I've also done this at the back of the left cylinder head as well. So now we're ready to put this thing on a stand. So you may have noticed that the uh, engine crane situation here is not ideal due to the pallet being pretty wide and the boom on my engine crane not being quite not long enough. But that's okay, we're just gonna be really careful when we lift it up because it's gonna wanna swing towards us. So we're just gonna wanna go slow and take our time. So here's a part of our engine stand. This is actually what interfaces the stand with the engine and there's four arms that move around. And in order to uh, make the engine uh, bolt to the stand, you need um, some decently long bolts. These are about four inches long and they're uh, M10 uh, by 1.5. I've left a link down below in the description of these bad boys. And you also wanna accompany, accompany them with some beefy beef washers. So that way they don't just pull the head of the bolt through this arrangement here. So you can do this. So now we can install our engine stand adapter and the four bolt holes you're gonna be aiming for here are these four on the outside. Put our... This is why it's important to relieve these arms loose so that way you can thread them on and you can move it around and position it just right when you need to. All right. So what we want to do is position our apparatus here basically in between the crank and the cam so that way when we rotate it later it's not all floppy and one-sided. So what we can do is with holding this in place we can tighten some of these bolts up. There we go, looks pretty good and then we can finish by tightening the rest of the bolts. We can go ahead and tighten these uh, bolts up on our apparatus here, making sure those are pretty darn tight. They're pretty good sized bolts, so give them some welly. Sorry if it's moving a bunch, but hey, doing our best. There we go. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, apparatus onto our stand. Ready to lower it down and it's on the stand. So now we got our engine on a stand, all the bolts back here are tight, we are ready for disassembly. Now we can remove that chain I put on earlier to get the engine onto the stand. It's pretty easy. There we go. Alright, now we can remove uh, this bolt that holds the plastic Vortec fascia piece on. Eight millimeter, remove that bad boy. Now this will expose our intake manifold. There she is. Our next step is removing our engine wiring harness. I'm gonna show you an example here. Basically all the GM electrical connected clips look like this. You can lift up on the safety and pull it out just like that. And that applies to all of them. So what we need to do next is uh, remove our coil pack uh, connectors here. Now on these connectors, you wanna lift up just enough to get the safety off because they can be brittle and snap. And I don't know if we're gonna reuse this in the future. So it's good to just preserve them. All right, so uh, this is actually like the distribution center for your coil packs. And it has a little bit of an added safety measure that you just need to maneuver out of the way. The 
before the connector comes out. All right, and then we can do our throttle body here. Same exact procedure, just like that. And continue doing this until all of your connectors are disconnected. So now with all the little plugs and little 10 millimeter bolts off the top here, uh, we can just remove our wiring harness and we're gonna keep it just in case we need some of it later. You never know, hold on to it. It's better to keep it and not need it. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and put this in my special box. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove uh, our whole coil pack assembly here. Now you wanna go ahead and remove the spark plug wires off so it all comes off as one unit. Just like that, and then we're gonna remove these five fasteners, they're 10 millimeters, you're gonna need a deep well. And this whole thing comes off. Do that for both sides. Now we can focus on taking the water pump off. It is held on by six 10 millimeter bolts. Hold on to these bolts as well. They can be a little tricky to find. There we go, and it might leak on you, so get a drip pan ready. There she is. So there's our beautiful water pump and we can set that aside. Next thing we're gonna do is remove our uh, air conditioner bracket here, 15 millimeter bolts. There we go. And then we can remove our motor mounts. Uh, same exact thing on both sides. They're 15, four 15 millimeters. There we go. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is remove both fuel rails. Now we're gonna do this all at once so we don't have to undo these uh, tricky little torx things because they can round off and be a pain in the neck. We're just gonna grab our eight millimeter and undo the bolts. So we're gonna move all four bolts, two on each side. There we go. Now we can just remove our fuel rails here, pulling straight up. Might have to wiggle her around a little bit. There we go. And there is our fuel system. So on our fuel injectors here, notice how one of them, the seal, the little O-ring didn't come with it. So it's actually still down there uh, in our intake. So you're gonna have to fish that out. All right, now we can uh, remove our EGR valve here, removing this 10 millimeter bolt here. And then we can use a 15 millimeter uh, socket here to move these bolts. Go ahead and remove that bad boy and set it aside. Next thing we can do is remove our crank case vent tube with just a pair of channel locks here and that'll just pull right off of our throttle body. Just like that. There we go. All right, and we can remove any uh, coolant hoses that are running into the throttle body here. 
important to know too, you could probably get away with just snipping these, um, but I might reuse this hose later, so I'd like to hold on to them or at least see how long it is so I can measure it later. There we go. So the next thing we can do is remove the 10 8 millimeter bolts that hold the intake manifold to the heads. So we're going to do this for both sides. These are really special bolts too, a little tricky to find. You can see that they're a little goofy looking. Uh, make sure you hold on to these bad boys. Make sure uh, to do this for both sides and then we can remove our intake. So before we remove this interesting intake manifold, you might be in wondering why it kind of does this loop-de-doo arrangement. So basically GM and a bunch of other manufacturers figured out that if you make the intake runner longer, it helps with air velocity. So more air gets crammed into the intake side so you can burn more fuel and make more power and fill up efficiency and helps everything. Basically, think old school tunnel ram, like on old school, you know, big blocks back in the 70s. That's what this is just kind of wound up. With all our bolts removed, we can go ahead and find a spot we could maybe put a screwdriver in. Now, it's made of plastic, so be careful with it. And we're just going to make sure that we can kind of rake it loose. See, mine's kind of flapping up, so we know that it is good to go and it is ready for removal. And when we remove it, um, because this is a full rebuild, don't worry too terribly much about crud getting down in there. Everything's going to be power washed, everything's going to be cleaned very thoroughly, so it's not that big a deal. You just don't want to drop like a bolt down there because you're going to have to go fetch it. It's kind of a pain in the neck. We can lift that bad boy off and set it aside. The next thing we're going to do is remove these coolant lines. These coolant lines are basically here to warm up the uh, throttle housing and uh, warmer air is easier to combust and increases fuel economy. But uh, we need to remove these. And it's a 10 millimeter bolt for all four of them. And it might ooze coolant on you a little bit, so beware. There we go, and set that aside. Now the next thing I want to talk about are these two funny looking holes here. And these are a NOx sensor. What these two sensors do is actually really important in an engine, especially uh, these modern ones. What they do is they sense a knock or a ping in an engine and retard timing in order to avoid creating NOx gas, which is brain damaging and very, very harmful to humans and animals. So these sensors are really, really important and they are a little tricky to remove. So let's go ahead and get a close up on that. All right, so what we're gonna do is for these sensors, both of them, is grab a pair of meal nose and squeeze both sides of the housing. Just like that. And then we can just remove it straight up. And we can do our second one, same thing. This one actually has some water in it for us, so that's fine. Comes out the exact same way, and we are good. So that's how to put your 5.3 V8 on a stand, take off the intake manifold and front accessories. Next time we're gonna show you how to remove uh, the rotating assembly and the heads and get it ready and prepped for the machine shop, as we're gonna be boring this thing out a little bit and get a little more power out of her. Thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me that all of you are watching these engine series and are so interested in them. I love reading all your comments. I try to read and respond to every single one of them. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.